Hello! Today's stories come from r slash am I the butthole. We have three stories today, but our first is wild and hefty with a pretty interesting update. It starts with, am I the butthole for refusing to be a godfather or legal guardian for my friend's baby without a DNA test? Weird title, weirder situation. I'm a 26-year-old male, and my best friend Derek is also 26. We've been best friends since we've been eight years old. Due to some family issues, he lived with my family during high school and college. My parents call him their bonus kid, and we are basically brothers at this point. So I really don't trust his girlfriend of three years, Nicole. She's 25. She has always just given me bad vibes. She lies about little things for no reason. Unfortunately, her and Derek have a lot of similar experiences and hobbies, and he's head over heels for her. I've always been respectful to her, but I'm always looking out for Derek. My girlfriend thinks he's blind with love. So Nicole is now eight months pregnant. Derek comes to me asking me to be the godfather or legal guardian. Derek works a dangerous job, so it wouldn't be crazy for something to happen to him. Nicole was on board with this too. I told him I would do that as long as he gets a DNA test done first. He was shocked and asked why. About seven months ago, Derek and Nicole broke up for a couple days. She claimed nothing happened with anyone else, that she just sat home and cried. But why not make sure? Why would it be an issue if she has nothing to hide? But my biggest reason is what Nicole did with her sister. So Nicole's sister had a kid, claimed her boyfriend was the dad. He wasn't and she knew he wasn't. Nicole lied straight to her sister's boyfriend for years. Nicole knew the whole time that her niece wasn't his kid. Everything came out eventually. Dude left, and Nicole blamed the ex-boyfriend for not loving his kid regardless. I told her that it wasn't his kid, and she knew it. When I called Nicole out, she said it wasn't her place to tell him. Ever since, I've kept her at arm's length and would rather Derek break up with her. Me and Derek have had deep talks about that but he just defends Nicole's actions. I asked him straight up if the kid wasn't his, would he stick around? He said no. Hence my pushing for a DNA test. Derek blew up at me, saying I was forcing him into something he doesn't want. I said I'm not helping raise some other dude's kid and that if the DNA test is such an issue, then pick someone else to be the godfather. And he can just tell Nicole I'm the one pushing for this and the blame can be on me. My parents are calling me a butthole. My girlfriend agrees that every kid should be given a DNA test at the hospital at birth to avoid issues. And we don't understand why that isn't a law. She is on my side with everything. Am I the butthole? Edit. After showing Derek this post and the responses, he is going to get a blood test done right now. Nicole isn't fighting him that hard, it sounds like. Update. Just wanted to provide an update because people were asking. So, Derek takes Nicole to the hospital for the blood test to establish parenthood. As the nurse is getting ready to do the test, Nicole freaks out, saying she hates needles. The nurses and Derek calm her down. Derek takes her home. This is when he found out the truth. So Nicole finally admits that she did sleep with another guy during their breakup and wasn't sure who the father of the baby was. She admitted to sleeping with him multiple times. So she went behind Derek's back and already got a blood test with the other guy to make sure he didn't match. So the child is 100% Derek's. Obviously, Derek is distraught and embarrassed. He actually knows the other guy Nicole slept with and is kind of humiliated about the whole thing. So he is moving in with me for a little bit till he figures it all out. He is done with Nicole and doesn't plan to be in the child's life at all. He told Nicole this and she is all upset about it. But it's her issue now and not Derek's. Derek refuses to co-parent with a pathological liar and doesn't want to be chained to her for the rest of his life. He told her to get an abortion if she wants, because he won't be involved. From the sounds of it, Nicole isn't going to pursue child support, but Derek said he would pay it if he has to, but just isn't going to be involved at all now. So maybe a happy ending for some, and maybe not. But my only advice is that everyone should get a DNA test, because you never know what someone is lying about. I'm glad I pushed for this, because the truth might have never come out. I'm sorry, why are we trusting that she already took another DNA test to prove 100% that Derek is the father? Anyone else happen to notice that small, important detail? I mean, she somehow managed to dodge the DNA test again. But of course, 
Derek is the father. I'm not sure why OP is so firm that the truth came out. I mean, it sounds like there could be more. In terms of a verdict, tough call. Since I do think it is a bit awkward to call for a DNA test when someone asks you to be a godparent, perhaps the better response would be respectfully declining, especially since Derek already knew where OP stood in terms of Nicole. Let's check out some comments that throw shade at everyone in this story. Someone said, if the other guy is the only one she slept with, and he's 100% not a father, then why did she freak out? Lucy Fell added, the people in this story are either the dumbest people in their country, or there are multiple guys and she has ordered them by desirability. Top choice is not the dad, so if Derek is also not the dad, then last choice is now the dad. Someone else shared, this is what a former friend did. She claimed there were six potential fathers for the time frame where she could have gotten pregnant. In reality, it was closer to 18. She had a really good autumn that year. The father ended up being the last guy on her list and also the only guy she slept with without protection because he has a varicose vein on his nutsack and it made him infertile. So many DNA tests were done after that kid was born. Someone else had this to say, quote, he told her to get an abortion, quote, Nicole is eight months pregnant. Dude, that's not how any of this works. Klutzy Squash added, the characters involved sound dumb enough that I can believe that Derek believes that this is how it works. In response to, so she went behind Derek's back and already got a blood test with the other guy to make sure he didn't match. So the child is 100% Derek's. Fabian X100 said, why do I have the feeling that that is a lie? The Shrouded Wanderer said, probably because she freaked out when the test was going to be done. If she already had a test done and knows Derek is the father, why would she dodge the test? Neither Entrance 208 said she wouldn't. That's why Derek was out of there. Someone else said, except he's acting like she could go to court for child support and he doesn't want to co-parent with a cheater. Sounds like he's totally buying it all and accepting he's abandoning his kid. I agree. It's probably not his kid. Our second story centers around a fight to de-Karen the next generation. The story is, am I the butthole for leaving my daughter in economy class and refusing to change her seat? My daughter Meg is 18 and is a very active person in social causes. She goes to marches, helps with NGOs and homeless people. The recent cause she embraced was the criticism of capital accumulation. My husband and I come from a wealthy background. Although our parents don't fully help, we know our privileges and the ease with which we can achieve our career and financial success. But Meg doesn't seem to understand. She often criticizes each more expensive purchase, saying that we could donate this money to people in need. I really understand her ideal, but it gets annoying all the time and any purchase she's criticizing. What she also doesn't understand is the little of this excess capital of ours gives her the freedom to do all this and the time without money stopping her. All the luxuries like an iPhone, car, and money are given to her so she can walk as she wants. And we agreed to help when she said she would like to take a gap year to delve into the causes. After three years without traveling because of the pandemic, we decided to take an international trip. Again, Meg talking about it being an unnecessary expense to go business class and that money could go to other things. She proved her point and we decided to go class save on a 10-hour trip. On the way to the airport, I talked to my husband. He decided to go to the gate and I would go to the duty-free to see some stuff. Meg butted in and started the same rant again. I was already pretty annoyed about it despite giving her a warning to stop, but I saw that she was going to be on this the whole trip. At check-in, the attendant asked if we'd like an upgrade to executive. And when Meg threatened to start over, I accepted and asked for two seats. She was quiet, asking if we weren't going to do it for her. And I was very honest, saying that I wasn't willing to spend 10 hours listening to it. And I want to enjoy the trip too. She started to say we should all stay in economy. And I said, no, she got annoyed about it. On the trip, she didn't enjoy anything and stayed on her cell phone. On the way back, I offered to pay hers and she refused. When we got home, she said that we knew that she is financially dependent on us and that we accepted to support her financially and that we refused to upgrade even though she couldn't do it to prove our point and that we were vindictive for being fed up with her and pointing out only the truths and if we don't like her way, let us know and don't punish her. She is still giving us the cold shoulder five days later. Am I the butthole? 
definitely not the butthole. OP and Meg obviously don't see eye to eye on social issues, and that's not uncommon in families. Both perspectives have merit. However, Meg is not acting according to the worldview she is, quite frankly, spouting off about. And I say spouting off because she isn't acting according to the values against which she is judging others. And to top it off, she's reaping the benefits of everything she is critical about. Quintessential hypocrisy. Let's check out some comments that suggest the exact approach I would take. Mariadoxum said, Not the butthole. Meg is, though. If I was you, I'd just do malicious compliance. Let her know that you support her in her causes. She doesn't want you to spend money that you could donate? No problem. She wants a new phone? Perfect. She can get the lowest cost flip phone and the rest that you wouldn't spend on a new iPhone will be donated, as will her old phone. Having a car is a luxury. Time to sell it. She can get a transit pass. And just think of how many people you could buy a transit pass for with all the money you save on not paying gas and insurance. And from the sale of the car. Birthday and Christmas presents are a luxury. Get her a cake to celebrate her birthday and a card with a donation made in her name to a cause she cares about as her gift. No more vacations. Those are a luxury, so she can't come on those anymore. The portion you would spend on her will be donated. Meg needs to get a job so she can get some perspective. She is acting spoiled, entitled, and not understanding her privilege and quite honestly being a hypocrite. She's mad that you upgraded, but then mad that she didn't get an upgrade. Potato Tomato 1002 said, not the butthole. Your daughter is a major hypocrite. She doesn't want you flying first class, but is upset that you didn't upgrade her to first class. It's honestly time for you to set the record straight with her. She is well aware that she is financially dependent on you, and yet she criticizes your every financial move. Tell her that the money you're spending on her would be better off being donated. So she should stop with the hypocritical rants, unless she can actually survive financially being on her own. She thinks that she is so righteous and woke that any poor person would get annoyed with the BS she's pulling. She is all talk and no act. Sure, she goes to rallies and stuff, but her lifestyle does not reflect it considering she actually likes the luxuries of having rich parents. Like going on unnecessary trips and getting everything paid for her. Someone else said, Also, I get the criticisms of the rich in general, but exactly what harm are her parents doing by choosing to fly first class? It's the same amount of carbon used either way. What a weird time to get on your high horse. Huge Ass Cloud said, The daughter's argument is that the price difference could be used for charity. It's not about carbon footprint to her. It's about what the money is being used for. Our last story is, Am I the butthole for calling my niece a spoiled brat and making her cry? I'm a 22-year-old female, and my sister is 28. She recently had to move in with me because she's getting a divorce and has nowhere to stay. Her daughter is seven years old. I live in a two-bedroom apartment, so it's cramped and tensions are high. My niece is terrible, to be honest. She screams all day long at the top of her lungs. I work from home, so I have tried to get my sister to get her to stop. But she's so depressed from her divorce that she struggles to get out of bed. I have asked my niece to quiet down myself, but she just smirks at me and continues playing and screeching. I have gotten reprimanded at work for it. She also recently broke my laptop. I made it clear to both of them that my niece is not allowed to use my electronics minus the living room TV. Lo and behold, niece got her hands on my laptop to play games on it, spilled milk all over it, and ruined it. I was furious, but my sister paid to replace it, so I let it go. I have tried many times to talk to my sister about this being unacceptable, but keep getting blown off and told to let her grieve in peace. I do feel bad for her, so I was doing my best to just put up with it. Today, I came home from errands to find my niece playing on my Nintendo Switch. (gasps) Mind you, this was kept in my room, so she must have gone in there and looked for it. Annoyed, I held my hand out and told her to give it. She ignored me. I called for my sister to take care of her daughter, but she was asleep and told me to leave her alone. So I just grabbed the Switch right from my niece's hands and took it back to my room. She started screaming and crying and literally rolling on the floor, but I ignored her. Well, she decided that was just not acceptable, so she took a sharpie and drew all over the living room wall. When I saw it, I freaked the F out. I told her she's a spoiled effing brat. She started screaming and crying even worse, which finally woke my sister up. She came out, and instead of being angry and scolding her daughter for her behavior, she scolded me 
for yelling at her and calling her a spoiled brat. Not my proudest moment, but I yelled at my sister that I was being kind by letting them stay with me rent-free, and I was being treated like absolute crap in return. She wasn't parenting her child, and I wasn't going to parent her child for her, so she needed to get her crap together and her daughter under control or they could find somewhere else to stay. Her daughter was not only getting me in trouble at my job, but had no respect for my personal belongings. And now I was probably going to lose my security deposit because she doesn't accept the word no. My sister started crying, called me a butthole, and she and my niece haven't come out of their room. I feel bad now. Am I the butthole? Edit clarification. Prior to this incident, I have not raised my voice at my niece a single time. I've tried to have talks with her about respecting my home and my things, but she couldn't care less. She also laughed when I cried over my broken laptop. Even then, I did not say a single word to her. I talked to my sister. I have tried to have conversations with my sister about niece's behavior, only to be guilted and told she was going through a hard time. Niece has always been like this, even before the divorce. Though I'm sure such a devastating life event has made things worse for her. I am going to set a date for them to leave once it calms down a bit. I will also talk to my sister about therapy. Definitely not the butthole. Sounds like OP was pushed to the edge here. I might even say she was overly kind in letting it get this far. OP's house, OP's rules. Life can be rough. Doesn't give people the right to shirk responsibility or treat others poorly. Let's check out the comments. I'm certain you won't be surprised by how one-sided they are. Someone said, not the butthole. Pack up their things and tell them to find another place, then get out. Tell the princess that she's not the first to go through a divorce and won't be the last. Oscar's Grouch added, very well said, not the butthole. Authentic Eve said, not the butthole. The title and seeing she's seven had me go butthole. But after reading the post, I don't blame OP. She's human after all. Someone else said, niece is screaming to get attention from her mom because mom is wallowing in her depression. I get it. Her marriage is over and it sucks but her daughter needs to be her priority. That means getting her butt out of bed and being an effing parent, not the butthole. Gay Cat Daddy added, several years ago, I had a breakup that absolutely devastated me. I just wanted to sleep all the time and I would often go an entire day forgetting to eat. And I'm a chubby guy who loves food, so that's a big deal. I still had to get my butt out of bed every day and go to work. And I was working two jobs at the time and continue adulting because I had no other choice. Sis needs to pull herself together. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.